Hello and how are you? My name is Mahindu Mbak and I welcome you to our ninth video of creating a complete inventory management system. So we shall do 40 minutes in this session and uh, here's our timer. It has started counting. Alright, so without wasting much time, let's go straight into today's business. As you can see, I've already launched uh, the project. It is there. I believe uh, you understand what I've done to reach at this level to put the project into Visual Studio Code. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the project so it can start executing. I'll expand the terminal and then write PHP artisan serve. Okay, so this is where the project is being served. So I can press control to click and go to where the project is and here is the what is the project uh, so i'm going to open another browser this is a brave i'm going to open another browser uh google chrome where i'm logged in as a what as a company owner so i'll come to come here and open another browser and then I'll go to our project link there it is and uh, you can see in this browser I'm logged in as a what as a, a company owner let me arrange these things properly okay so after doing that uh the next thing that we're going to do right now is now to resume with the business where we stopped at in the previous lecture uh so let's see uh this is the project i mean this is where we stopped at so we stopped at a point where we were able to create a what a product okay or a stock item however we say we say that there are a lot of things that you have to work on uh, before we do what before we uh, we proceed it's not all about uh, creating a stock item and then proceed uh, there are a lot of things that you have to attach for example there are going to be some hooks uh, that are going to update the stock levels in different categories okay so when you create something like this you have to call those hooks uh, now uh, what we're going to do right now uh, we're going to base on this product ID and then call it and then we create a function that we shall be calling after after the what after the stock update also maybe after the what after the the stock create okay and then um, that method is the we're going to first create it and then we we put it into the events okay so what i'm going to do right now we're going to go to this controller okay okay so let's go to that controller of stock stock item controller and then you're going to go for example here in the grid on top of this grid and we get the item that you've just added in which is going to be stock item and then you put find and then say find one of course this is the product that we've just added right now okay so let me see if it has well it has been found i can just simply put a dd and then come and refresh we can see this is the product okay so we're going to create a function that is going to for example finish these things that are missing and also as well as what as well as um as well as uh, as well as what as well as updating other things okay so we're going to create a function maybe you can call it uh, prepare so that function we shall be create we shall be calling it on creating and also on updating okay so let's go ahead and go to this stock item okay let's go to this stock item so I can press control and click on it to go to it here okay so I'm going to I think I think we created it. <laughs> I think we created it. As if we created it. 
all right i think we created it but we did not um, finish it okay you see we created it but we haven't finished uh the function okay yeah i think we created it, it is. we are calling it on preparing and also on updating all right let's uh, see if this function addresses all our problems uh for example what i'm going to do i can call it okay okay let, me, let us first see if it address all our problems so i'll just copy these uh values okay sorry about that i'd created it but i forgot i'll copy those values and then let me come back to our controller and then i'm going to comment here create a comment and then paste them here so i'm going to check value by value by value and see if everything is what is uh, updated all right so to do that of course we shall begin with um id id is okay created that is okay updated that is okay company id company id uh, so we can use that prepare also to make sure that it does what it does uh, create a right company id when a uh, product is being what is being um, is being created okay so um we can base on uh, created by to get the company id okay and then we update that one okay so what let's do let's let's do that so i can call this prepare here for now i can trigger it from here okay so to trigger the prepare this this prepare uh function if i want to trigger it uh so i can just simply say prepare function and then i put prepare and i pass the what the item here so this one you just and i put die here i'm just calling it just for the sake of what of testing and make sure that everything is all right okay so i can put here maybe i come here on top and say die and put maybe preparing okay so let's go ahead and refresh now you can see we are preparing okay so this we are just doing it right now because we don't want to keep on filling the form again and again Okay, so this is a technique that you use if you want to just uh, trigger something and then a test without keeping on keep, without keep filling on the, the form again and again so right uh so all right um uh let's see so if you come here uh so here we're getting the category if the category is not found we throw the method so we have done all these things Okay, so here we get the store category and we update the store category. Here we get the user and we check, we get the financial, what's the financial, uh, we, we get the user by the person who has created it. If he's not there, we throw invalid. Here we get the active financial, if it is not there, we throw the invalid, something like this, okay? So at this level, okay? Uh, so after we send back, you know this method is being called here by updating and also what? Creating. So when uh, we update these things will be updated in uh, automatically in background so that's how we can make sure that everything is what is up to date um after doing that now the next thing that we're going to do uh, let us make sure that uh, everything is addressed uh -huh, for example now the company id the company id you can also make sure it is updated so let's come here to stock item and then also make sure that the model company id equals to user company id because we know the company id is attached on a what on a user so this one will always make sure that he, when uh, an item is submitted it is automatically updated what the company id because it will be hooked it will be called by a hook here all right so that is done let us proceed created by is already addressed so category id is addressed uh stock subcategory id that one also already addressed financial period id as you've seen it's already addressed the name of the products addressed this is how you check out and make sure that everything is all right uh -huh. so um uh then uh -huh, the description is addressed the image is addressed the barcode this one will fix it uh -huh. so we come to sku this one is uh addressed also uh generate sku this one's also addressed we can okay we'll come back to this one let's just uh put your star 
Okay. All right. Uh, update SKU. Let's put a star. Okay. Gallery. That one is also okay. Uh -huh, we come to buying price. That is uh, also addressed. The selling price was addressed. And then the original quantity is also addressed. And also the current, current quantity. So here, current quantity on creating, we make sure that is equal to the what? The original quantity. So let's go ahead and come here to stock item. So this one is uh, this one is always true, only when on creating. Okay. So we're going to put here. We're going to put it here in the on creating. Okay. So we say on creating, and then we say, uh, then we say current quantity equals to the original quantity. So we make sure that the current quantity equals to the what? To the original quantity all right so that is okay yeah i think that's it okay i think that's it okay yeah so let's go ahead uh, and 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 see, work on this sku okay let's go ahead and work on this sku things so we may check that if sku is, i mean if we, we may check that if the sku generation is done by what is manual we don't update it okay otherwise if it is not manual we let the system to generate the sku okay so how can we do that we can just simply come here and cut this sku okay okay and then generate sku we cut this method and then we come to on creating to on creating and check if uh, if SKU okay we can just simply check if SKU is null or it is uh, less than three then we know that uh, we have to generate it okay uh, so to do that we, uh, we can create a method that is going to be responsible for generating uh, SKU <coughs> SKU so we can just simply let's create that method so we are going to put it in into maybe in utilities we can just be calling it okay and then to generate sk you can even put it here you can put in utilities so let's go ahead and put in utilities so i'll go here in utilities so here we're checking if sk is null or it is having uh, length less than three then we know okay uh the system should generate it automatically all right so let's go to utilities here and then we're going to write a static method for generating sku so static um meth static public function generate sku maybe you have to accept the what the company id all right so let's go ahead and write the sku so for example you can say it's going to be comprised of a year okay of a year then dash okay then month okay then month okay so the year the maybe the category okay the year dash uh do we, can we need to know a month when the product was added i don't think that is very necessary uh we can say the year dash the subcategory id then dash and also maybe the serial whether it is one or two or three of that of those products in the what in the company in the company so let's get the year so this is how you can get the year by just simply saying date then say why and then we can get the category okay uh maybe you can put here um or can receive here a subcategory okay okay so 
you get the subcategory and then we get the serial okay so we return okay uh, we can receive here the subcategory so uh so that's how we're going to format our sku it's going to be the year the subcategory and the the subcategory id okay and then the what the the serial number the number of the category in that item so that's how you generate the sku so it's going to be the year it's going to be like 2022 2023 so to know when the product was added and then we get the subcategory from here and then we get the number of products in that subcategory and we add one and then we return we say sku is goes to year dash uh category dash and then the serial and then we return uh the value so that's how we can generate the what the sku uh so we go back to our item so we check if sk is nothing it is not it is empty uh we go ahead and do it and say sk equals to that okay so you can even put this one in prepare in the way it is and so you should know it should be called on updating and also on creating i think that i don't know whether that is okay yeah let's also do the same I don't know whether that is okay yeah let's do that okay but it would be smart if we keep our sku to be uh only uh integers all right i think that is okay so we'll be calling it here in, on prepare. So when someone calls the prepare and then go ahead and check if the SQ is empty or he's having, uh, just just check if the SQ is empty, we go ahead and do it and generate our own. Okay, like this. I hope you can see. So this function of putting utils. So like that, we'll be able to get the word, the SKU. Uh, let me, let's see the kind of SKU that we have. Let me call it outside here and then do some dd and we see uh the sk that we're going to come up with okay you see we are coming up with that sk so it's there uh, this is the cut subcategory and this is the what and um the sku i mean the the number of product in that category all right i think that's okay all right so let's go back uh to you uh to what to the hook uh, so these things of SKU, we can say, okay, we are done with these ones. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do, so we can also uh, generate this SKU when someone says generate. Okay, let's, 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 leave, let's leave that. Okay, so I can also say when... Sorry, let's go back here. Stock item, okay. I got the stock item. We can generate it there that when it is empty, and also we can say maybe if uh, generate stock uh, stock generate what this case go to yes. Then we we'll go ahead and do what and uh, generate it, okay so here we set it back to no because we want it to do what to keep on generating it okay like this yep i think that is okay and we check if it is manual if we generate is yes and And it's not equal to sorry. Okay, sorry, he was here. Okay, if um 
generate SK use code to yes and uh, update SK use code to yes and uh, what and generate SKU equals to money. Okay, I think that's okay. So if this is true, then we'll also go ahead and generate the SKU and then set back this one to nothing. All right, so that's okay. I mean, that's okay uh, with the product creation. I think that is all we need when we're preparing a what? When you're preparing a product. So I hope if I come here and I save, you should be able to do what? You should be able to uh, to work properly. So it has worked properly. There's no any error. And you can see that uh, uh, everything is all right. Okay. Apart from uh, the stock quantity, because this one always is only called when we are creating. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, yeah, I think that will be called when you're creating. That's okay. All right. So uh, with that said, now let's go ahead and uh, so let me first delete this and then we, let's try to run everything and see if everything is all right. Let's go ahead and delete everything and then let's go ahead and delete everything these ones and then we try to refresh uh, so the only thing that we are not sure of is the uh, current stock the current stock is zero because we are not doing what we're not calling that on creating for now so let's go ahead and uh, create it so let's go ahead and create a new product I mean a new stock item and see if the current stock will be updated so I'll come here and say maybe ice cream and then say test product two and then go ahead and put some SKU I leave it empty and then say it should be automatic and then I put the buying price as the as the 50,000 and the selling price of okay, let's buying five thousand, and the selling price as what as uh, 4,000, 4,000, uh, 500, and then also maybe the original quantity as 10, uh, pieces, or maybe I can say like maybe a hundred pieces and then say maybe some details and then you go ahead and submit. All right. SKU, SKU is required. Is it required? SKU. How is that required? Let's go ahead and see. I don't think SK is required. Okay, so let's go back to stock item controller. It should be optional. SKU, it should be optional. All right, so this SKU. When you are creating, it should be optional. So this is on editing. So on creating, it should be optional. I think that is now okay. Yeah, it was not supposed to be there. Let's refresh. Uh, we'll do some fake filler, and then come here and say categories ice cream maybe. That is the product, and then say it is automatic. Yeah. So original price. 500 5000 selling price 5500 all right and then say maybe the request 110 and i submit so everything is all right okay they what they're saying they're saying what's the error all about html special charge must be of type string. Let me see. Help us. Then the resource views. Field blade users. And call. Was the product created? Yeah, the product has created. Okay, we shall face that error later. But you can see the product has created. And then the what we wanted, we have been it has been achieved. 
you can see the what the you can see the the you can see the current quantity is here okay so the original quantity is there and the current quantity is there that is all right so now uh now another thing that you have to do right now is to is to update uh the product i mean so the product uh, the, the item categories just prepare here So I think that you're going to do is to update the what uh, the categories. Okay. For example, we have to update the quantities here. You see. So after we have created or have updated, we have to to update the categories, and also have to update the what the subcategories, the information, so we can be able to know the what the quantities there. So what you're going to do, just like the way we uh we 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 like just like the way we did um the prepare function, so we're going to do another function that is going to be updating okay everything that is concerned. For example, when uh, you upload the product, when you upload the stock item, when you come here to store categories, you're supposed to be able to know that okay. Uh, this is the amount that we invested in this particular item. Okay, so that's what you're going to do right now. And also when you update it, you should be able to do what? To hook or to create those hooks and do that. Okay, I hope you get that point. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So since uh, these, I mean, since these subcategories, so I'm going to update the categories and subcategory. So since these subcategories um, are being, since, since these, this, since these subcategories mm -hmm. are being, uh, these, uh, these categories and subcategories uh, depend on the stock items. What does it mean? It means that we are supposed we are supposed to do what we are supposed to call these ones after the category i mean the stock item has been created or it has been updated okay so we are going to create a function in this for example the category we are going to be in the category and then we shall we are going to say maybe update okay maybe uh update uh values update uh, update update information or maybe do self update something like that we're going to just call that put a function there that will be responsible for updating its what it's uh, self okay and then we shall be calling it just to update itself something like that okay uh, so let's go ahead and uh, and do what and do that okay so uh what i'm going to do you're going to come here for example let us begin with the stock categories and you see things that are supposed to be updated okay that are supposed to be updated when the stock item what uh changes uh so let's go to stock category Yeah, it is so we're going to put a function that is going to be called to update itself or oh, begin with the subcategory let's begin with, let's begin with subcategory and then we come to category so let's go to stock subcategory okay let's begin with this one okay uh so let's go ahead and then say maybe update information update self or update statistics update update uh, values okay so it's going to be a public function and then I'm going to call it maybe update update self okay 
so it's going to be updating itself <laughs> that's how i can call it okay so this is just responsible for updating itself okay so we can put here die and say time to update self okay so it will be updating itself just update its values all right so after doing that now we're going to crew to go back to stock item controller here okay and then in here on top here i'm going to call our i just like they did we're going to call uh we're going to search for example this second product which has the current quantity okay we're going to search it and then in that product i mean in this in this item we're going to find or to get the, the 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 current category and then after getting the current category we are going to say it should update itself and then that method we shall put it in the on created and also on uh, updated okay so uh, let's go ahead so uh, to get the current product category so let's go ahead and say okay and say so this is the stock item i hope you're there uh, what you're going to do right now can put here maybe die okay now let's go ahead and say maybe uh so there is a relationship on how you can link this one it's with its what with category okay okay let's we can find it as well let's first do here for example dd and we see what is inside that stock item so if i come here and refresh you see this is what is there so what we're going to do right now we're going to get first the category okay so we can just say maybe uh the stock category category equals to stock category and then you say stock category and then we say find and then you say this item and then you put here so after finding the category so we're going to call this category and say update self it should update itself so this should be when an item has been created so you just say update self okay i hope you know that i hope you you know why you're calling that so you're calling that to do what to make sure it is updating itself all right so let's go ahead here let's go back to store category so we're going just to die here and say update self so if i come and refresh here um update self cannot be called on null okay so uh it means that the store category was not found so it's supposed to be here store category not stock subcategory category like this okay so let's refresh it's called it cannot be found okay so it's going to be stock category id i think that is okay okay stock category id oh sorry yeah i think that is okay now so stocks category id then you say find that okay i thought i hope you have to get that there so if i come and refresh here you see we are now here in update self okay so let's go ahead and write some logic in this update self okay so now let us first find the things or the parameters that we need here so we can first say dd and say this so you should be able to see things that we are going to need to check there so this is the what the stock category now i'm going to copy everything here and i see what we need to update when an item changes so let me delete this uh, now i'll go ahead and paste these few things here all right okay So I'll go ahead and check one by one. ID is already catered for. Um, created that is already catered for. Updated that is already catered for. Company ID is already catered for. And then the name is already catered for. That for me that's how I check and make sure that everything is alright. Uh -huh. So we check if it is if it is active. I think active is also catered for. All right, then after the image is okay okay so the buying price so buying price is the amount of money that has been invested in this 
uh, in this talk in the in this particular financial period okay so the total the total buying price of items that have been uh, invested in this what in this particular financial period okay so it means that we need also to get the what the uh, financial uh, period okay so how do you get that so we can get that by just getting uh same react say active active financial period equals to it is that get active financial period so it, since this item this stock category has company id so it means that you can be able to get it there okay so i can check if is null i can just uh, return let me just return i don't want to uh, throw an error i can just say return should stop from here so we have got now the financial active active financial uh, record all right so let's see how much you have invested in this uh, category in this particular or in this uh, fine active financial what financial year or financial period I hope you get it. So to do that, you can say maybe <clears throat> uh, say total buying price equals to uh, stock item so you're getting this stock item okay so how much you have invested in this stock item this particular period equals to stock item where so you put a first where where the stock category equals to this particular category and then you add another where where the financial year equals to this financial year or the active financial year Oh, I don't know whether we should. Um, I don't know whether we should get the financial year in which I think we should get the financial year in which uh, this store category was uh, created. Okay, I mean uh, we should get the financial year. Yeah, I think this is okay. We are we so we are, we are getting the total amount buying price of these of stock items that are under this category in which this particular financial year, i mean in, in the active what in the active financial year. so by doing like this you should be able to know how much you have invested in that particular category in a certain financial year. so if i come here and just do some dd you should be able to know so if i come here and refresh you can see this is the total investment that we have added there so it has added the total buying price or the total amount that we have purchased in this particular financial year of the products of this what of this category okay so and then it is getting it there so that is the total buying price i think that is okay now so the next thing that we're going to do you're going to get the total selling price okay so you should know how much uh Hey, how much you expect from these items okay so total selling price total selling price equals to that okay so stock items category and then in that financial year and then we get the total selling price like this so here we can be able to know how much we're expecting to sell in this category okay all right so expected profits so expected profits we can also calculate it so ex expected profits is going to be what equals to the selling price okay how much you're expecting to sell minus the, how much you're expecting to 
I mean, how much you have invested in there. I hope that is okay. Okay. Uh, then how can we get the earned price? Okay. So this earned profit, we shall get it uh, after we have worked on the what? On the sales. Okay. After we have worked on the sales. So we shall also come here and see, okay, how much we have really sold. And then we fix this one. Alright, our time is up. Uh, so let's go ahead and now update these real values. So we're going to simply say this. Okay, this. Then you say buying price equals to that. Selling price equals to that. And then we total expected profit equals to that. And then we say save. So that is how we can make sure that okay, this product. I mean, this category is always what is always updating updated i hope you get that okay so this is how we shall make sure that this category is always updated i hope you get it so this method we are going to be calling it inside when we when the stock item is what is uh, is is uploaded okay then we shall call this method so if i come here and refresh here everything is <laughs> what are they saying total buying price sorry it's supposed to be buying price not at a buying price and also here selling price and then like this okay so let's go and refresh everything is all right okay so this profit you shall come back to it when you have started working on the stock sales okay and now let's go ahead and uh, remove this logic from here and then you put it in the right place so i can copy that so i can copy that so if I come here and I delete, let me let us first delete this and we see. So if we come and we delete, and then we'll be able to see that uh, if we come here to stock categories, we are able to know how much you are we have invested, how much you are ex we have we have we are, we are expecting to sell, and the total profit that you're expecting to make in this financial year, in these uh, particular uh, categories. That's beautiful. All right, so and you've seen how we've calculated that. Uh, so let me go ahead here in this, and then we are going to copy. We are going to cut these ones and put them in the right place. So they're supposed to be in the hook of what of stock item. So I'll come here back to stock item, and then uh, we come to the we we create the created hook and the what and the updated hook. So on created uh, on created hook, we get the category. This is how you can get the, <laughs> I think, did you create this category here? Not yet. I hit not yet. The relationship are not created, but we shall come to that later. So we are going to put here. Okay. We get the category. So this can be mode or not item. So we get the category and then we do what? We say update self. And also we do the same to what? To updated. Okay. So we do the same also to updated. So that is it. That is it. All right. Uh, that is it. Uh, so if I come and refresh, everything should be fine. So let's go. If you add, look, we'll test that. We'll test that by adding an item. Let's let's test it right now. So I'll come here. I'll come here and comment this. Uh, so let's go ahead and maybe we edit one of these ones. So let's edit this. So instead of having this buying price, let's put maybe uh good buying price okay let's let's edit this one the one that we just used for for the examples okay let's see what we have now so the total investment as if it's not telling and then also total expected. All right. That is as if. All right, let's see. All right, let's go ahead and I want me always do as I test. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and wrap all the stock items. So, come to our project. So I'm going to truncate 
we call it truncate stock item this one will clean everything the stock items all right we want to test and see if these things are really summing up all right so if i come and refresh here i don't expect anything so let's come and say new and then you say um um stock category let us put this one okay vegetables and then you say let's first put there maybe some random data okay so under vegetables and then you say okay the thing will be automatic maybe okay the scale will be automatic and then you come and put here the total buying price it can be maybe let's say ten thousand that is the buying price and then the selling price maybe we're going to say maybe we shall be selling each at twelve thousand and then the original quantity we can say maybe it is how much it is 10 all right i think that's okay and then after put here some description i think we forgot also to multiply okay you have to multiply by the original uh, quantities to get the buying price and the i mean the total, the total investment I thought I expect, expected that we forgot it, we're going to do it. So if I refresh here, if I submit here, everything is okay. Uh, we can see the buying price is there, the selling price. So if we come here to the categories, uh, you see, so put, forget about this one. Eh? This one, you use it just for, for testing. This one is not updated, <laughs> okay? But look at this one. Total investment is this, and then total sales is this one, and then total... Uh, profit is this uh, so you can see but this is not really actual because we forgot to multiply by the quantity this is for the single item okay this is for the single item but the quantity is this one so we are supposed to multiply with the what with the quantities so that we can have uh, exact amount that was invested in okay so let's go ahead and update that so it will come here to the Still category and then you're going to update that okay so uh, Uh, yep, it's challenging here because um, uh, the quantities the quantities depend on each stock item, not on all of them. So that brings us to a need. Of creating uh, a loop yep I hit loops <laughs> head loops All right interesting uh, so we're going to cut this one from here and make this one to be zero and then we're going to loop okay So bank price go to this plus so it's just plus or equal to I mean plus equal to and then you say buying price. However, why we are looping is because we want to multiply by the original quantity. That's how you can know the total investment. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then it will not be multiplying. Okay. 
so we have to put here get let me first show you how we're going to do it so you can see stock items of this category equals to that okay like this and then we're going to look through oh, that's okay yeah uh, then we're going to look through those stock items here though in that financial period yes well looping i hate looping but we shall see the optimal way how can do that and uh, then after we can also i think calculate this one from above there we may not need it so i just say equals to zero and then also do the same thing here so you don't need two queries okay so total selling price is called the selling price times the what? The original quantity. I think that is now okay. Yeah, that is now okay. Hope you can see that. So this one will help us on that issue. Uh, let's try to update something and see if it will update automatically accordingly. Okay. So let's come here. So you know that book will be called even on update. So if I come here and edit and I put here uh full stop and now we should be able to see that uh, we should be able to see you see it has been multiplied by 10 so everything is now right so the total investment is that one and then the total expected profit is that one so everything is has been multiplied by original quantity which is 10. so maybe yeah i think that is okay I think that's okay so maybe according to the company policy they may say okay what if we delete the product maybe if it was a mistake should that uh, also be removed <laughs> all right i think that i think that makes sense this i think we should we can also maybe get the product that are uh, active mm -hmm. where Status is active. I don't know. Maybe we may need only to calculate the active product. But I don't think no. Let's calculate everything because sometimes product might be active, but why it was really invested. So let's call this method also on what on um, on delete. Eh? Deleted. We also call it. So you should also update when you, someone deletes. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. I think that is okay. Yep. Um, then uh, let us uh, <coughs> start another session and also work on the what and work on the and work on the what on the stock subcategory. Okay. Let's start another session. And then work with it and do the same on the stock subcategory because your stock, stock subcategories also have to be updated even this one you live in now work on the order level all those things okay so let's work on that uh for now let's stop from here let's meet in the next lecture where this one is now okay now let's work on the stock subcategory and see how we can have that one done so you can pause the video and see how i've wrote this method of self update in the stock what in the stock category here all right so let's work on the stock subcategory in the next lecture so uh we shall start another lecture right now